Hello everyone, Anna from Savvy Catch Realty speaking to you today from Obid. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the whole Caldas de Rainha area. Caldas de Rainha is about an hour drive north from Lisbon and it's a, a smaller, medium sized city and um, it is actually an university city too. You have uh, an arts university. It's actually where I, I went to study. And you have uh, a very strong arts community in this region because the, there is a background in uh, ceramics, especially. There is this uh, famous artist from the Borgosi that is called Bordal Pinheiro and Bordal Pinheiro became very very popular and his ceramics are very specific you probably have seen um, about them the fruits and vegetable shaped ceramics you are able to find a bunch of kind of easter eggs throughout the city of Caldas. Some of them were removed, but I've took pictures of them before of that, so that we are going, still going to show what happened. And if you pay attention throughout the city, you will find all kinds of these little ceramic animals and, you know, easter eggs kind of filled uh, in the walls and in different locations throughout the city. So when you explore the city do pay attention to that Caldas de Rinha is a, a very nice city uh, for living it is still not extremely popular but it is definitely gaining in popularity it is not coastal but it only takes you about 15 20 minutes drive to get to Foz do Baralho, so that's the closest beach area you also have São Martinho do Porto which is kind of a bay and um, Foz do is a bit more expensive than uh, uh, São Martin do Porto. And this, uh, both these areas, the, there is, has been a growing expat community. And you can find more and more expats living in these areas, which also leads to an inflation of prices. However, the prices here in this area are not extremely inflated yet. So you will find, you are still able to find two bedroom apartments in the city for under 200k, not new builds though. Uh, and if you are willing to renovate, you know, buy something older, older and renovate, you can probably still find a three bedroom and stay within that budget. So that can be very interesting. On, in regards to villas, you will find them mostly on the outskirts, although there are still some very interesting buildings to recover available in Caldas, and Caldas can be a very interesting uh, investment area. Unfortunately, it has been excluded for golden visa purposes. However, it is uh, definitely an interesting area to, to explore. I would say that the downside of Caldas is uh, trains. Uh, honestly, trains, it's only, you only have the regional line. So the regional line is those trains that pretty much stop everywhere. And they are useful if you want to go to, you know, the coastal and small villages. So if you want to go to Nazaré and if you want to go to, for, to locations like that, the, the trains can be useful. But as intercity, um, transportation mode so if you want to go to Lisbon or to Porto forget about it it's just not worth it the the train line is absolutely horrible it stops everywhere it takes you like two hours or three hours to reach Coimbra just go on a bus the bus uh, network is decent but to live in these areas I personally prefer to have a car it is very conveniently central so i'm actually living in Caldas for that reason as i keep traveling up and down the country a lot it's a very conveniently central location so it's about one hour drive to to lisbon when i go to porto is about two hours two hours and a half and uh, if i want to go to algarve it's not a five hours drive like it would be from porto so it's very convenient for me as someone that keeps moving up and down. It's a, a very nice location. And the other thing that I like about Caldas is when I'm, when I'm in Caldas, I actually only take out the car 
when I need to go uh, shopping, like if I need to be bring gallons of water and that kind of stuff. Otherwise, I'll just walk everywhere because it's very easy to walk everywhere in Kaldish. And you don't really need to have the car. It's a very nice city for walking and it's not a very hilly city. Well, sure, it's not completely plain at all, but it's a very easy to city to walk in. And another thing that is very, very popular in Kaldas is the fruits market. So the fruits market is um, an attraction in Car the, the fruits and vegetables. It's for local merchants. And um, my mother and my mother's family is actually natural from Kaldas. And we used to come here every Christmas and every big celebration back when my great grandfather parents were alive. And my mother has this very strong connection to the city, obviously. And there is still things that she comes uh, to get specifically from the Kaldish market. So there is a few fruits that are endemic from this region, like the Casanova apples and the Pere Rocha. So they uh, grow uh, around these regions and uh, she comes here specif specifically to get them. And often I go and get uh, and bring them to her when uh, I'm, I'm going from Kaldish to Porto and vice versa. Uh, so you can, it's very nice to have this fresh fruits market. It's uh, mostly, I don't know, honestly, I don't know if there is any, they, they, they don't do it, but they do it most mornings. They usually uh, take it off at around lunchtime and it's the most active and uh, brimming with people, especially on weekends. People come from other cities to, to come to the fruits market. Uh, another thing that my mother specifically comes to call us to get is trochas de ovos. Trochas de ovos is a typical sweet from Caldas, a conventional sweet that um, it's basically sheets of fried egg and sugar uh, rolled up in an egg, kind of an egg roll kind of thing. It's a very, very sweet thing. And if you like very, very sweet things, it's a very, very nice thing. <laughs> the, um, another curious thing, I, I got a bit derailed, but at the start I was telling you about the ceramics. And yes, you have the fruits and animals that are very popular, you know, the, the, um, the swallowtails, you have the cabbage dishes that became very popular. But then there is another thing that became very popular in Kaldas that is actually phallic shaped uh, ceramics. So basically ceramic. And uh, this is a theme in Kaldas. <laughs> you will see in a number of places, you will see like uh, uh, in uh, bakeries. So you will see it shaped thing, uh, sweets being sold, you will see a number of ceramics and you will see it pretty much everywhere and it can be a bit shocked for the more prude people but it's a thing from Caldas and um, it is because of Bordal Pinheiro because he used to do these caricatures of politicians and one of the things that became popular was a uh, uh, a caricature in which you would pull a string. Uh, there is you be the you know the statuette of the the politician, and you would pull a string, and you know the <coughs> would come out, and that became very very popular. It definitely became a theme. So that's a, a fun fact about Kaldish. And as I was saying, Kaldish has um, a very renowned uh, design and art school. It's mostly uh, in modern arts and uh, multimedia, sound and image effects and installations and all that kind of thing. And the local university event is called Kaldas Late Night and um, then uh, all kinds of exhibitions happen on the streets and on people's houses and it's uh, the, the city is completely taken over by uh, the arts at this time and you have uh, a bunch of installations and all kinds of things so the city is very active regarding arts and a lot of people that studied in uh, Ezad, so that's the name of the school, end up settling in college, which also generated a lot of small businesses. And there is very interesting small businesses to be found in college around this community. So I would say that college is a very nice city to live in. I would say it's 
better if you have your own transportation. It is about one hour, one hour and a half to Lisbon by a bus. Uh, and you also have a bus to the airport, so that can be nice. But train lines are terrible, so you pretty much have to rely on bus. And there isn't really any decent transportation inside the city, so you mostly either have a car or walk. So um, that's pretty much how Caldas is for living in. And then around Caldas, you have a number of interesting locations. Like I said, São Martin do Porto, that is this bay area that is still quite affordable, but is growing in interest for expats. Then you have Foz do Adelio that is very known for wind sports. It gets very, very, very windy there. Believe me, it's like you fly there. And for that reason, uh, it is definitely very popular for wind sports and you can see um, people doing all kinds of wind, wind sports when you go to Foz do Adelio. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the most pleasant location, you know, for just going to the beach and to the sea and so on, also because the currents there are quite strong. So uh, I would say it's more of a, um, a water sports kind of location. And the, um, the seafront, you know, sea view gets really expensive. You pay for the view and the plots with sea views and new construction with sea views tends to be honestly very overpriced. So it will be minimum 350k and like up to like 600, 700, 800, that sort of prices which I honestly think it's a bit too much, but apparently there's people willing to pay that. And um, like I was saying, in some in the port area, the prices are a bit more affordable. We actually have a, a client that will be closing on a, a new build for 250 for a two bedroom apartment with sea view. So that's, uh, I would say that is a very good deal and it's still possible to find in that area. Uh, and then, Another thing that you have in about 15-20 minutes drive from Caldas is Obidj, where I am right now. So Obidj is this lovely medieval uh, village with a castle and it's very, very charming. And because of that, the prices are quite inflated from a tourism perspective. But around here you also have the lagoon and so on, so you have very nice views. Uh, uh, we we're going to show you a bunch of videos from that. We there is very nice views in this area, and it's very pleasant. Um, the prices are depends on the location. Some size, some there are some very inflated prices, and there is some nicer. Uh, acceptable pricing so it's a bit all over the place because of the tourist interests but uh, I would say it's a very very nice place to visit but personally it's not one of my favorite places to live in uh, but everyone has different requirements and it would be important to you know check it out for yourself and see if it's your thing Part of our service is to understand our clients' lifestyle and needs to make sure we match them with the correct location. And there is, of course, clients that the correct location is around here. So it's all about your own personal needs and lifestyle. And you shouldn't just rely on the tourism information because... Yeah, sure, you go to a holiday in one place and you fall in love with it, it's beautiful. You would say, oh, I would love to, to live here, but it's completely different to be somewhere on holiday for a week or two where you just are enjoying the facilities and the amenities and not actually, you know, living here and having to deal with transportation and isolation and you know, amenities and the availability of groceries and all kinds of things. So if you want to come to a different country and buy with it, definitely make sure that you look at things from a resident perspective or have someone that helps you give that insight and provide a bit of a culture clash cushion. Because there is always going to be a bit of a culture clash when you move to a completely different country. So overall, I think that Caldas de Rainha can be a very interesting area, especially from a price 
value kind of perspective. And if you want to be uh, not too far from Lisbon, it can be a very interesting, affordable uh, option. Then you have the Silver Coast, you know, Ericeira, Nazaré, Lourinha and so on. And I'm going to make a different video about that. But these are, you know, seafront locations that are very, very popular for water sports. And like I was saying, I'm going to make a video about them. And they are the locations that are typically referred to when people refer uh, to the Silver Coast. However, the Silver Coast coast term is used very broadly so uh, be careful when you use that term because people never really know what you are referring to but I think uh, this is more so this is what I wanted to convey about the Calder de Ringe area I hope this is helpful and uh, I'm going to keep making more videos about locations I hope you find uh, these useful and I hope to hear from everyone if you leave the comments we always come back to you if you want to use our services feel free to contact us at contact at savvycatrealty.com we are a real location and buyer agency we help uh, expats move and buy in Portugal and we hope through uh, we support through the whole process from actually choosing the location getting the visa choosing the property verifying the property making sure that you know exactly what you are getting and you're getting a good deal and we also support with renovations construction and uh, project managing for investments so do contact us at contact at savvycatrealty.com if you think our services may be of use to you we are always uh, able to help. My The person replying to you will be my administrative Katya. And she is very fast and very efficient. <laughs> and I, like I was saying, I hope to hear from you soon. And see you again on the next location I talked about. Bye.